uh, roots in a thing which uh, bit me in the ass uh, one time. It's, uh, it's, it's very fine that we create a struct for decoding the JSON. Yeah, well, you and see for this kind of use a pointer, right? And, uh, yes, exactly. Yeah. Because uh, the struct will get initialized no matter what the JSON is. And if one key is missing in your JSON, you will have a zero value. Yes. So if you have a thermometer or a humidity meter which uh, is just missing, instead of missing, what you will see is zero. And uh, you want to avoid that. Yeah. So there are uh, two methods, basically. And uh, in our challenge, uh, in the solution later, which I will show you, we are going for the pointer method. So instead of uh, using integer, boolean, or string fields, we are using pointers. And uh, when we unmarshal to those uh, structs, it will be nil. So if the field, if the key is missing in a JSON, it will be nil. So that's the key of the second challenge. And uh, I think uh, based on the, the experience of the first one, it might would take a little bit more time what we have. But uh, if you are keen on it, I'm. Uh, I'm interested to know how you do pointers. Oh. I don't. I mean, is it? So it's the same. It's the same. Otherwise, I would just show you yeah. oh. briefly the yeah. solution. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 No, you just create a struct with pointers instead. Uh, that means pointer to ints. Then the then you just check the value whether it's nil. If it's nil, that means it's, uh, the, uh, we didn't get the value there. Okay. Yeah. Um, so from there you can deduce which one is the faulty one and put But why do you have to use pointers? Why can't you just get a no, error, you can't use the error object from because the it will, no, no. When you are marshal, it won't the throw you an object, error. You will get the default zero value oh, of your there's no way there's no like JSON override no. pedantic or something. Uh, oh, and then you'll have a problem. Because you, you, you have the unmarshal and you have the decoder. Do they both the same, they, same they, way they would just return yeah, zero? Yeah. Yeah. That sucks. Yeah, that sucks. And not most people encounter it the hard way. Because they don't think about it first. And then you will see that, oh, no, nothing wrong. I, I, I have a fire alarm. It just brings me zeros. You know, it's, it's fine. It's not wrong. Uh, yeah. so because before because if my fire alarm is a boolean, and uh, the fire alarm just dies and doesn't send me anything, it will stay false forever. <laughs> Oh, you have the pointer. Okay, let's see this how this pointer is. Uh, so, uh, the way it works, I hope this is it. No, that's no. not the solution. That's no, not. The, yeah, the solution directory. Uh, exactly. So, uh, that's, that's a completely different thing. It's, there you go. So, this is, uh, I created this uh, sensor data structure. You can see these are pointers. So the main is, is just the uh, same routine thing. And uh, read that. And uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Yeah. Here is basically I'm, I'm checking for, for nil values. And uh, if uh, any of them. You could have done, you could just check for zero. But zero could be a value. Zero oh, is a value, see. yeah. Because so, so if you use a point, if you use a pointer, it just becomes nil. Yes. Yeah. That seems like such a horrible workaround, isn't it? It's not a dynamic language. It's not. That's the only way. Otherwise, you will get a value. Zero is a valid value. I mean, zero. Yeah. Another solution. You can use a map. So when you use uh, when you're using a map the map will get only the members which were in the JSON. So yeah. you, when you loop but around... You have lots of okay, okay, okay. No, you can loop around and uh, check if... Uh, ah, yes. Yeah, but... Uh, you check uh, if something is in the uh, value, okay, 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 okay error. Yeah. yeah, if value, okay. If, uh, if okay is false, then uh, it's not member of the map. Mm -hmm. I guess this is... If... Uh, so wait, you're checking... Three values. Yes, because in our example, any of them could be missing. Yeah, but ID is not. But, but uh, I, we, we assume that ID is. Four no, wait, but ID, ID I, we assume that ID doesn't fail. Oh, I see, I see. But what is that last thing? Equals nil. 
Uh, oh, oh, uh, uh, yeah, I'm just right. collecting the things. Yeah, those things are true. Append to that. Yeah, account. yeah, because we are, we want uh, 40 right. IDs. Why is the append? Uh, oh, because it's a pointer again. Okay. Yeah. So, so with every time you deal with JSON, you should basically be using pointers. Then. Uh, if you have the nurse for it, and you know that zero can be something. Uh, that you it, it depends on uh, the API. Like, let's say if you look for Instagram, right? Some of the values may be missing. If 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 it's if it bothers you uh, that you don't realize that something is missing, then you have to use. But if if you are fine with zeros and uh, it doesn't break the system, I think it's fine to just use uh, integers or booleans or whatever. But in in a in a case of a fire alarm, I think it's quite. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, practical, yeah. yeah. Just, uh, I'm just thinking, how would you do this in, uh, in JavaScript to check that value? Yeah, you check whether the thing is defined or not. Yeah, on the other way, uh, uh, like I, I think I think that's uh, there is a way to do it in another way. So when you pass a zero value to and and you want to encode it, you can uh, flag it as uh, omit empty. So, yeah, omit empty. empty basically. Uh, what that means is. Uh, but that is for you to. Oh, uh, on the other way, encode, right? yeah, yeah, that's for you to encode. You to encode, encode. So, uh, I think there is some. Uh, uh, oh, that's, that's for marshalling, not. Yeah, marshalling, yeah. What about. Um, go, go down to that if, if thing again. Uh, couldn't you. Isn't it nicer to write it as uh, like a switch? Mm -hmm. Since, uh, yeah, I started with it, then I deleted it because. Uh, is the switch shorter? Like, is this too light? Uh, you will have to write uh, switch through, and then you will eventually write then uh, the comparison anyway. So it might be nicer, but still. I find that if and switch is. is switch. Switch is just a nice. You would use, you would use switch. Well, no, no, yeah. switch. You have one value, right? Then you, you can't, you can't go switch. You can, you can go uh, if you. How would you do that? Switch through, and then you start, and it will go through. Through, you start with switch, switch through, and you can go through the cases, and then you can do a comparison in the cases. Really? Awesome. <laughs> you definitely deserve the book. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. That's the other. Uh, if you want, you can show it. The more you go like Jason, the more it's like dubious. Yeah, there. My first experience of dealing with maps, map interface. No, I use JSON for Python, right? So. Which is better. When, when no, no, it's it first starts out as easier, but when you start to miss values, then you get exceptions thrown, and you'll be like, shit, and this is production code, and you know that. Yeah, so. So, we're, we're going to start the challenge, but uh, I think Zotan will present the third one that is really hard. Um, yeah, we, we don't really have time for the third one, but yeah, I, yeah. I usually do things over the course of. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I can complete the second challenge. Sometimes uh, in Go you write uh, servers which doesn't deal with web but with raw uh, TCP sockets. Uh, one of these examples was uh, I wrote a little gateway which connected to embedded devices which were communicating uh, through uh, TCP sockets. And uh, we definitely want uh, the JSON objects uh, processed separate, uh, one after the other. And uh, Go provides a very neat way for it, and uh, some of you have already used it. Is the decoder? Yeah. Yeah, decoder is an awesome little thing. Uh, the the good thing is that a, a TCP uh, connection in Go is an I/O read write closer, so you can just read and uh, write and close. Close doesn't matter for the uh, decoder. But you can pass it directly to the decoder. So you have a 
TCP stream, you can pass it to the decoder, and it will just uh, churn out JSON as as it uh, processes your stream. So the, it, how does it work? Does it like, read it line by? How does it? Doesn't the IO reader like read things line by line, right? Uh, no, IO reader just reads. What you do with uh, what you read is up to okay, you. So you read the whole thing and then you feed it on the code. Yeah, uh, the decoder, the decoder implements reader. So what it does, it reads. So there is line reader or string reader. Yeah, so I'm there are very various uh, readers which can uh, read from uh, from a TCP uh, connection. JSON does it in a way that it recognizes where a JSON starts and recognizes where it ends and gives so you the that coder, part. The coder does it. Yeah. Okay. It recognizes, and if you make an error in the JSON, it recognizes that, and if it fails sometimes when you have uh, some weird uh, uh, series of malformed JSON, it will never get a <laughs> good packet. But yeah, that's another story. But basically, yeah, it it scans first. And when it encounters a complete JSON message, it reads from the TCP uh, connection. TCP connection is a, a kind of a reader, which once you read from, it's not available anymore. It's in the, it's given to the JSON decoder. So basically, it has a curly brace matcher. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. If you have time, you can look into it. It's uh, quite twisted. I can see the value where it is the, the format is like uh, CSV and now where you are just sending rows and rows of data. So mm. you just keep as soon, as soon as you get one row, you can just keep reading it. But for JSON and all, it's a bit more difficult than that. Yeah, and uh, most uh, protocols, they they in TCP, they have to add the delimiter like new line or uh, zero or or something to separate uh, the packets. But uh, with, with a JSON, it's done for you. You don't have to put anything between JSONs. And the good thing is uh, the decoder, if there is something rubbish uh, in between JSONs, just ignores it. So every time it reads a complete JSON uh, thing, and then we keep on pushing JSON into yeah, yeah. JSON strings. Yeah. And, uh, and there are some uh, nice things to it. One of them, which I like pretty much, is the uh, raw JSON uh, type in the JSON package. With that, you can uh, just get the data without decoding in a structure and decide to use it later. So that's, that's also a nice thing. And uh, let me just uh, quickly run through. The challenge would have been to connect to a stream of uh, to a TCP stream. Actually, I think it's still running on a server, so I can I can just quickly show you how it would have looked like. Uh, I'm going to zoom in back in, in this thing in Mac. Okay, that's huge. Is there a way of like okay. or something? Why is there? This is the uh, stage three uh, sort of yeah. for your convenience. Two, three, five, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we have a telnet. We have a telnet server for the stream. So if you do this, you will, you will just see. This is what you get. Wow. It's, wow. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, it's basically. Oh, sorry. So it's an endless stream. Yeah. yeah, it's an endless stream, and all of you get the same stream. That's the beauty thing in, in Go. All of, uh, it's, it's fanned out to all of the guys who connect. And it has a, a value and a timestamp. That's the only two things. And the value is an encrypted something. And your task would have been to use the decryption. Uh, actually, it's, it's given in the, in the example to find out which of these packets is a so-called magic packet. And those who would have been able to first uh, collect three of them would be the winner. And... Uh, what defines a magic packet? The magic packet, uh, I show you the code and you will see. 
So you only need three of these? No, yeah, actually, some. most of them is non-magic. But sometimes, eventually, you will get one. So you have to decode all of them. And uh, this is uh, how it goes. So the main does uh, the connection to the TCP, and it creates a, a connection here, yeah? And I put it to handle. Right now, it's not a separate Go routine because I only deal with one stream and don't have to put in Go routine. And I pass it uh, as an IO read write closer. It's uh, not necessary, you can pass the connection, but if you pass it uh, as a read write closer, when you write your tests, you don't have to import the net, but you can just create anything which implements the read write closer and do your tests with it. So here is the decoder, I just pass it. And uh, here is, uh, this is not the solution. I will show you the solution. I will. Yes. So, can you see? Yeah, okay. Yeah, so uh, you just decode it. And uh, if the decode fails, if the decode fails, you might want to create a new decoder because the leftover is still in the buffer. And this one just throw it up, throws it out. out. Uh, you take the value of that. It's a stream packet. I, I created the structure for you in the stream package. So you just take the value and uh, check if it is a magic value. And if it is a magic value, you just uh, add the value to the solution. The add value doesn't do much. It's just uh, happened. Because I didn't want you to collect more than three, I created this. So. How do I look at the struct of the foreign package? If you want to, if you want, it's here actually. Uh, it's on the screen now. But I'm just curious, like, um, say you're developing and you just want to inspect a, a third party. Uh, Everything that you can use is bot. So in the fact you have just not there for whatever. No, or you print a send hex yeah. uh, <laughs> and then that's very <laughs> You get an idea of no, the, the reason why I put it here so you don't have to deal with uh, the structure because the point was just to use the decoder. Oh, well, I guess you can use it because it, it go gets it, doesn't it? Puts it in the, uh, yeah, and um, what, what happens on the server side is just randomly create, not randomly, actually every one, two seconds, I don't know exactly, it just creates a magic packet. And then gives it to you. Uh, if you want to check out the code, uh, I had some fun with it, uh, with the encryption and stuff. Uh, yeah, you have the server inside? Yeah, you can just uh, check it. Uh, there is an encrypt here and there is decrypt here and uh, stuff like that. You can... Uh, so what is, what is the typical use case for uh, manipulating TCP streams? Uh, well, for us... Uh, our devices uh, are using JSON as a transfer protocol for, for sensor data. Later we might change it to a binary, but for now it's JSON. It's very easy to debug and uh, work yeah. with. And uh, for that reason, we... Delivering like decryption keys or something like that? Uh, so no, we are delivering temperature data and stuff like that. I wonder whether this will work with message pack. With what? Message pack. MSG PACK, which is like binary JSON kind of thing. 
if you write the decoder for it, <laughs> I don't okay. know if there is a decoder. It's, it's one, two, one, two, one, two. But it works with uh, Go. Oh, okay. That's the smallest interface you can do. Uh, here, yeah, but uh, yeah, if if you write your own, uh, you implement the the decoder, then I think you can use it in the Go. But for now, I think these these are the two. So we can get this from Singapore first. Yeah. And uh, the stream server is uh, it's an interesting piece of code, I think. But the fun thing is it's uh, just 100 lines and it sends out quite much stuff and for everybody who connects to it. It could have used channels, but uh, instead it just writes. So how, how is that controlled? Is it, it, it writes as much as the bandwidth? Or? No, I didn't want to do that. Uh, <laughs> uh, here you can see this is uh, this is oh, the part so which sends out. Yeah, I, I created two tickers, uh, slower for the magic packets and a faster one for the normal. And, uh, what, what does it look like when you plug the, the connection anyway? What happens? Does it just go slow? Or? I don't know. It will be slow to reel it, we know that's for sure. If I write in zero, it will it wait forever? or? Oh, we can try this then. Like, yeah, 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 all right. Yeah, just we can so try it later. The code is there, so uh, okay. when we end this, uh, we'll have also code, and then everyone can like it. So that's thanks for that. Uh, yeah, thanks. That's a lot of, a lot of that. Yeah, thanks. thanks. Yeah, it, it started out as a small little thing, and as we went in it, I mean, uh, Mark did a lot of things for submitting the data, creating the leaderboard and stuff. It, it, it was not me. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Just one challenge will do, and then the next time we'll do the other challenge. Yeah, that's, and, that's the yeah. plan. And to be honest, we, we, you know what you're doing, and that's too tough, isn't it? Yeah. I think the joke. Jason and Golang is a bit painful. Uh, I grew to like it. But I think maybe that's because I worked oh, too much. At least it's a steep learning curve, maybe. I don't know, I like the fact that it's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> stupid oh, yeah. and uh, Python. Python makes it too easy, but then it's also easy for you to do things up. It's Hands sure, it's very easy. Who, is, who is the winner? Josh, sure. OK, so, uh, so okay. can you show the little bit? The, the the leaderboard. Oh, yeah, so this is the final. I realize that it was a code sample there. I just read the reading. Yeah. yeah. You put it somewhere here. Oh, yeah, stage one is actually. Only wants to write the whole thing, okay. So, uh, so Jai was the first one on the first. Yeah. So we, we have an interesting situation where uh, one team solved the first challenge and then another team came in and solved the second one. Um, so I guess um, who is the... Mm, Jaru was the first with the first. Right. So who's Jaru team? You guys. Yeah. And then who's um, Joshua team? So yeah. you guys solved the second one. Yeah, so I, I think that's uh, pretty much a tie at least. Yeah. So uh, can I get your contact after this? So then we'll send you like the moves. Um, right. So now we have, uh, you can choose either Go Web Programming by searching or the Go in production or something. Yeah. Yeah, so okay, that's it. Cool. Hey, what, where do you, do you read any short line books? Yeah, uh, we have to leave at night, right? Yeah. Okay. Not reach. Even though I have a right. book, I tend to read the first 50 pages so the last and then 